God is truly worthy of the glory. Amen. He is worthy of the glory, the honor, and the praise. If you would turn with me to Isaiah, amen, Isaiah chapter 26. We've been in a series this month, uh, and this series is uh, Mind Reset. Amen. We've been in a series. Keep playing for me for a sec, bro. We've been in a series called Mind Reset. And uh, I really think it's important for us to, uh, as we try our best to uh, embark on the new things that God wants to do in our lives, uh, that we really allow our minds to be locked into what God is doing. And so over the last several weeks, we've been talking about uh, your mind, right? We started with uh, being transformed, Be being transformed. Amen. Somebody say, I'm being transformed. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. And then last week, we spent some time talking about uh, how you've been thinking too low. And God's trying to bring us up to a place where we would think uh, more highly about the things of God uh, so that we would reach for higher heights and that we wouldn't allow the limitations of our low places to restrict us. Amen. Uh, but here in Isaiah chapter 26, the writer says something that I think is important. Amen. The writer says something that I think is important here. Uh, Isaiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 4. I'll read them for your hearing. Uh, it says in the King James Version, In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah, we have a strong city. Uh, salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates that the righteous nations which keepeth the truth may enter in. Uh, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. Uh, trust ye in the Lord forever for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. So this, this day, I want you to think about it from this perspective, uh, protected by perfect peace. Amen. Protected by uh, perfect peace. Amen. So we want to spend some time here. Uh, here, amen. Uh, here in Isaiah chapter 26, uh, he starts by talking about Thanks, bro. He starts by talking about um, this salvation that uh, the children of Israel are going to experience. Amen. The the history in uh, this particular part of the Bible is is interesting because the historical background of Isaiah from chapters one uh, through thirty nine uh, it the, these these chapters involve uh, the Assyrian aggression and attempts on the part of Assyria to expand control into the areas of Israel and Judah. Amen. Somebody say they tried to expand control. They tried to expand control. Uh, and I started thinking about this. Uh, what we find here is the Bible says uh, that in this particular place, uh, in this particular time in history, uh, the Assyrians are trying their best to position themselves uh, to a greater degree uh, in the areas of Israel and Judah. And so what I started thinking about, I started thinking about the fact that uh, the the enemy or better yet the adversary in your life has always been trying to gain greater territory in your life amen uh, the the adversary has always been trying to gain greater territory in your life but someone say uh, protected by perfect peace amen I'm protected by perfect peace peace. And so here uh, Isaiah starts talking about that there's going to come a time after all of the oppression, after everything that they have dealt with, after their years of turmoil, there is going to come a season where they are going to enter into a future hope and a future glory. 
but the future hope and the future glory, the song that they're going to sing, uh, is going to happen after, uh, something else happens in their lives. Amen. And, and he said that they would begin to rejoice. And I want you to understand, uh, I guess at the very beginning of this is your, your, your season to rejoice is not far away. Amen. I know your, your season to rejoice is not far away. I did an interview recently and she, she asked me a question, uh, during this interview, she said, uh, if you could leave us with one thing, what would you leave us with? And I said, uh, nothing exists the same way forever. And although this season that we're in or, or the season that you are in in your life sometimes feels like it's overwhelming, I want you to know beyond anything else that uh, nothing stays the same way forever. And so here in the Bible, uh, the children of Israel are resting in the fact that Isaiah is releasing this prophetic word to them that there's going to come a time where they are going to be able to sing a song of salvation. And this salvation is going to look a lot like walls that have gone up where they have now been protected by the hand of God, my God. And so what we find is God is always trying his best to uh, reveal his protection to us. Amen. He's trying to reveal his protection to us. He's trying his best to ensure that we don't miss the necessary protection because his protection brings something in our lives. And so what we're trying to get to, we're trying to transition from a life of storms and chaos, and we're trying to move into an experience where we are experiencing the protected peace that comes from God. Amen. And so he says here in verse three, he says, uh, according to the English standard version, he says this, he said, um, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Uh, because he trusts in you. And at the very beginning of this verse, I thought there was something interesting here that he says, you keep, amen, you, you keep, uh, you keep. And, and, and I think it's important for us to recognize that you are not able to keep yourselves. I know, I, I, I know. Uh, I, I know that, that that there are times where you think because you're all grown up now and you know a little bit that you're able to keep yourselves. Amen. But the Bible even talks about that you would be your brother's keeper. And so you are not necessarily able uh, to watch your own six. Amen. When 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 different military uh, uh, guys go into certain areas, uh, they go in not always able to watch their own backs. So there has to be a, a, a spotter that's protecting them so when they go out, there's someone watching them on the other side. And so uh, there has to be uh, a, a relationship that exists in your lives that would allow you to be kept. My goodness. There has to be something that allows you to be kept. Because there are going to come times, there are going to be times, there are going to be moments and seasons in your lives that you are not able to manage everything on your own. So what is it that you should do? What, what, what is it that you're going to do when uh, the storms of life approach you and now there's a responsibility on your part to show up? What are you going to do? How, how, how do you uh, uh, move beyond certain places in your life uh, on your own? You can't always do it. So there has to be uh, something that is keeping you. So he says, you keep. And, and as I thought about this, uh, we, we live in a society and we live in a time in history where it's easily uh, understood that uh, when we don't like the way certain things are transpiring, we say things like, you do you. Amen. You, you go do you, and I'm going to do me. And I think that that's the same position that we've taken with God, because there are moments in time where God is trying to keep us, uh, but we don't always like the way that God leads us, so we get in our feelings and we start taking on these ideas where we have a disposition that would, would make God think that we don't want his protective covering. Amen. He says, you keep him in perfect peace. And as I was reading this, this text, and I was reading this verse more specifically, and I was looking at the, the context, this is what I drew from it. It says, uh, you protect, you preserve, 
and you conceal and guard, amen, without fault or defect, uh, satisfying all the requirements uh, to bring freedom from uh, oppressive thoughts and emotions and the spiritual unrest we feel, uh, you, you, you're going to bring and protect us when our consciousness awaits and, and, and remains and takes full residence in you. Amen. I'm going to say it to you one more time. It says, uh, God, you protect and preserve and conceal and you guard uh, without fault or defect. Uh, you satisfy all of the necessary requirements uh, to bring us to a place of freedom, uh, to strip us from oppression and to deliver us from the hardship of emotional baggage. And and you provide for us the rest that we would otherwise not feel when we allow our consciousness to remain fully in you. Amen. And so what God is trying to do, uh, many times what the enemy likes to do in our lives, the enemy attempts to expose uh, the broken parts of who we are. Amen. And so when we are exposed, uh, we are oftentimes left vulnerable and that vulnerability, amen, leaves us susceptible to greater attacks and greater oppression. But someone say, I'm being protected by perfect peace. And so what God is trying to do, he's trying to move us from a place where we are vulnerable and susceptible to every attack of the enemy and he's trying to as the bible says keep us he's trying to bring us and protect us and preserve us and conceal us Amen. Uh, there are some of us that are not ready to be exposed. Amen. And so you are waiting for the assignment that God, uh, that you believe God for. You are waiting for the opportunity to do more in the kingdom. You are ready to step out and, and try new things. But you are in a place in this particular season where God has to keep you because maybe you are not ready for the exposure. Amen. Sometimes when you are exposed and you are not ready, it makes you weaker and it makes you more vulnerable in the moment. Amen. When a, when a child is born, amen, when a child is born prematurely, uh, there are proper protocols that are put in place so that the child does not go out and, and, and become weak and ultimately risk their lives. Amen. Uh, some of us need to stop risking our lives because we are prematurely trying to accomplish things uh, that we are not ready to accomplish in this season of our lives lives. And so because God is the type of God that he is, he's trying to keep us in this moment. Amen. Someone say he's a keeper. He's trying to keep us. He's trying to conceal us. He's trying to guard us. He's trying to protect us because he knows that if we get outside of our protective covering, we are susceptible to death. Amen. And so a child that's born prematurely isn't released out to do uh, anything like everybody else. There's a season where the child has to remain at the hospital so that they can properly monitor him so that he can then be released. And so in the season that you're in, don't get frustrated that you've not been catapulted into your purpose. Understand that God has been keeping you so that he can protect you. My goodness, God has been keeping you so that he can protect you. And the Bible says that when he protects you, uh, uh, he's going to protect you. He's going to bring you into a place of perfect peace. Somebody say perfect peace. When we look at the word perfect, uh, the perfect be perfect begins uh, to be described in this way. Uh, perfection is described as something that is fully satisfied, something that has been brought brought into its final form, something that is absolutely pure, something that is totally complete. So God has been keeping you so that he can perfectly bring you into the moment where he can release you. Amen. The Bible says that he's going to bring you into perfect peace. Somebody say perfect peace. And so on the opposite side of peace exists uh, chaos. Amen. On the opposite side of peace exists what is known to us 
as chaos. And so many of us have experienced chaos in our lives. Uh, we've experienced storms in our lives. Uh, and sometimes we've experienced storms because we are in places that God never intended for us to be in. I'll give you an example. When uh, Jonah was trying to uh, avoid the assignment, uh, he ended up on a ship. And when he ended up on this ship, it created a, a, a bunch of waves on the ship, so much so that it started throwing people off the ship. And, and because he was in a place that he was not designed to be in, it brought the perfect storm. Amen. But even in the place where it brought the perfect storm, God did something interesting. After Jonah was thrown over the side of the, the boat, uh, God allowed him to experience his perfect peace in the place of the whale's belly. My goodness. And sometimes it feels like we are being consumed by something that's going to overtake us. But what we have to recognize is God is allowing us to enter into places so that we can experience his rest and his protection for the season that we are in. And so God is trying to bring us into a place of perfect peace. But the Bible says something interesting. It says he brings them into perfect peace for those that have their mind stayed on him. And so my question to you today is, uh, where has your mind gone? Amen. Where, where has your mind gone? Uh, uh, many times, uh, and I've said this over the course of the series, uh, many times what we find is uh, we have these moments where we feel like we are losing our minds. My goodness. Uh, the, the, I've heard someone say it this way. I feel like I'm losing my, my natural mind. Amen. And so the reason that we have these moments where we feel like we're losing our minds, it's because we have not allowed ourselves to plant our minds on Jesus. I mean, we've not allowed ourselves to plant our minds on the things of God. And so if we're going to experience uh, the perfect peace that comes from the Father, uh, there is a requirement uh, from us, and the requirement is that we would uh, keep our minds on him. Amen. Somebody say, my mind is stayed on him. Uh, he wants us to keep our minds on him uh, because our minds represent something that is is, is, is critical. Uh, when you look at the word mind, uh, what it says is it's, uh, it's a place uh, that houses uh, the complex elements of who we are. Uh, our minds uh, house uh, our desire, our minds house our will, our minds house our reasoning, our minds house, amen, uh, our uh, uh, hope and faith, amen. And so when the Bible says that he would keep us in perfect peace, whose minds are stayed on, on thee, uh, essentially what the Bible is trying to get us you, uh, the Bible's trying to get us to start attaching all of these critical elements of our heart and our mind back to the Father. Amen. I, I understand that when certain scenarios come up, we start uh, reasoning within ourselves. And I'm reminded of a scripture in Matthew. It says, uh, for Jesus recognized that he reasoned within themselves and he spoke amen, uh, to what they were reasoning with. And, and so uh, you will have moments where you start reasoning, trying to uh, uh, figure out what God is up to. You have these moments where you're trying to uh, reason within yourselves to see if you should keep following after what God has asked of you. You have these moments where you're trying to figure out if you should stay connected in the faith. You have these moments where you're reasoning and you're trying to determine if you even believe God at all. You have these moments when you start reasoning if God is actually going to heal you. And God is asking you in this moment, don't keep reasoning reasoning within yourselves, but turn your reason over to him. And as you turn your reason, he also is asking that you would turn your will over to him. And so what we find is after we start reasoning within ourselves, oftentimes our natural selves will lead us into a place uh, that's not going to allow us to find God. 
And so he said, I would keep you in perfect peace if you would keep your mind on me. And so I want you to be intentional in this season about shifting your thought process and shifting your ideas and shifting your reasoning and shifting your will and shifting your emotions uh, back to the father so the father can do exactly what he promised he would do, which is bring you perfectly into a place of completion where you are able to experience freedom from all of the things that the enemy tries to oppress you with and so with oppression oftentimes meets depression and in our depressed state we stop looking for God amen in 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 our depressed state we stop having the faith to believe in our depressed state we no longer look at ourselves as valuable in our low place, we no longer look at ourselves as uh, the, the royal priestlyhood that God has already called us. Uh, when we are in our low place, the reason that I told you last week that your thinking is too low uh, is uh, more specifically centered around the idea that when you can't see yourself uh, the way that God sees you, uh, you will miss these moments where you can experience perfect peace. Uh, but just like... Uh, uh, Jesus uh, right in the boat in the midst of a storm he was able to rise up from the place where he was sleeping and immediately begin to speak to the storm and the storm responded to the spoken word of Christ and I want you to understand today just like that storm that's talked about in the gospel uh, the same storms that you experience in your life are not a threat against God's word uh, in your life and so if you would simply uh, fixate on the things of God in this season you would be able to transition out of chaos you would be able to transition out of your storm you would be able to find in the midst of everything you're going through the perfect peace and the bible says the Bible says that he will give you peace that surpasses man's understanding. And so as you fix your mind on the things of God, God is always working on your behalf. So as you transition your thinking back to God, God does something and he reciprocates your, uh, your leap of faith in the place of staying connected to him. And what he gives you in return for your faith and your connection in the relationship, he gives you perfect peace and this perfect peace is not me calling you and telling you that everything's going to be okay when a storm arises the perfect peace that God is trying to get you to walk in is where you hear his voice clearly and you keep moving in the direction of where he is even when the water seems unstable even when everything around you seems like it's crumbling even when everybody in your life is walking away Perfect peace still pulls you in the direction of where God is. Perfect peace allows you to look at everything that you are faced with and not be overtaken by the storm. But perfect peace would, incent, would, 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 would essentially say that you recognize that now that you have been fully submitted to God, and God is fully restoring you and fully pouring into you. In those moments, you then realize that you aren't going to get yourself through a storm, but it's the one that's been keeping you from the very beginning. And before the world was formed, he knew exactly who you were. Before the world was formed, before you came out of your mother's womb, he knew all of the hardship. He knew all of the heartache. He knew all of the brokenness. He knew all of the, the, the lack that you would experience. And he would perfectly position himself to speak to the lack in your life and so the bible says that he jesus is seated right at the right hand of the father making the intercession necessary so that you would always experience perfect peace and the peace that god's going to give you is going to go over the heads of those that don't believe because they won't understand how you could experience what you are experiencing and not crumble. They're trying to figure out how is it that you are able to maintain your sanity, amen, in the midst of everything else that's going on. 
But I declare today that I'm not going to lose my mind because of what I'm going through. I declare today that I'm not going to get lost and I'm not going to allow my emotions to overtake me. I declare today that the adversary is not going to push me into a place of being oppressed. I'm, I declare today that I'm not going to allow the enemy to bully me because I got a big brother who I'm going to call on. And when the bully comes, I run to my big brother and my big brother whose name is Jesus comes to my rescue the Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run in and they are safe I'm looking to be secured by the safety of God in the place of my mind amen and so while everyone else is falling apart and becoming unglued I recognize that the Bible has given me this scripture because it wants me to realize that uh, God is bringing me out of a place and he's transitioning me into a place where I will be able to sing a song of celebration just like the children of Israel were able to do when they saw the salvation of the Lord. But they were looking for it. Amen. Somebody say they were looking for it. They were looking for it. They were looking for it. And if you don't start looking for God to show up in your lives, if you don't start looking for the peace that God wants to release, if you don't start uh, positioning yourselves to be in search of the things of God, then quite naturally, you won't be stayed on the things that are going to bring peace in your lives. And so the Bible says that the enemy comes uh, for no other reason than to steal, kill, and to more specifically destroy. And so the fabric of your faith, the enemy is trying to destroy. Just as the Bible says it here, uh, the Assyrians were trying to press their way uh, into uh, new new territory where, the, where, the, where, where Israel and Judah was. They were trying to press their way. And just like uh, this Assyrian army was trying to press their way, the enemy has been trying to press his way. He's been trying to push you back he's been trying to move you out of your place of steadfastness and get you to fold in the moment but I want you to declare I'm not going to fold amen I'm not going to fold because I recognize I recognize that God is doing something in my life that would allow me to stay in a place of perfect peace Amen. And so if that's if that's the place where you are, amen, and I, I recognize uh, that the hardest part is immediately identifying. Amen. The hardest part is being able to immediately identify when you should start your search for him in your brokenness. Amen. I, I recognize how hard that is. Because uh, the enemy would have you to only see the calamity that exists. The enemy would have you to only keep your mind stayed on what's not working. There's this thing, and I've mentioned this before. Uh, it's called the, eight, the, the Pareto Rule. Amen? Uh, the Pareto Rule. And so... Uh, you, you would know it as uh, the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the things in your life are going well. Maybe even 90% of the things in your life are working. Uh, but for some reason, you can't see the parts that are working. You only see the parts that are not. Amen. And so because you only see the parts that are not working... It causes you to magnify, amen, something that's actually really small. And now it becomes large in your life, not because it's actually big, but because you continue to magnify it. In science, they, they use a magnifying glass, and the kids, everybody's taking science, and what they do, uh, they'll give you, uh, if you're looking under the microscope or if you're just looking with a magnifying glass, you will take something that is the smallest uh, particle, 
amen, the smallest particle, and you will place it on that little glass card, and then you'll slide it under the microscope, and, and then you will dial in so that you can enlarge it and see it. <laughs> and so as you start enlarging the small thing, it becomes bigger in your lens. And so in the same way, when you start magnifying the things that are not working when you start magnifying the things that are broken, when you only look and see the depression, and when you only identify and connect with the parts that are trying to oppress you, what you end up doing is taking something, and I'm not minimizing your issue, but you end up taking something that's small and you start magnifying it, and it becomes greater than everything else in your life. But the Bible says this, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Amen. And so my appeal to you today is that you wouldn't leave me here by myself trying to magnify the Lord by myself. But I'm hopeful that there are a few of you out there who will magnify the Lord with me. And then the Bible says, oh, come and see that the Lord is good. And the Bible says, taste and see. And all I'm trying to get you to do is change your appetite for how you see things. So you wouldn't focus in on the small things and magnify them, but that you would stay locked in on him. And then you would experience the peace. And then you would experience the rest. And then you would experience the joy. The Bible says that uh, uh, restore the joy of my salvation. God is trying to restore joy in your life, but he needs you to be locked in on uh, his saving grace. God is trying to uh, uh, replenish you and regenerate you, but you won't fixate on him enough. You won't look for him enough. You, you won't lock eyes with him enough. And God is like, if you would just lock eyes with me for a moment, If you would just lock eyes with me for a moment. Then you would see me. And then I could release to you. The perfect peace that only he. Gives. And so for those of you that. Are already experiencing that peace. For those of you that are already experiencing that peace, I want you to understand that he's a keeper in that place also. And so I don't want you to transition out of your, your focus on him because things are going well. This is not the time to become laxed. Amen. So if that's, so if that's you, if you're sitting on the other side of, of that phone and you know, I, I've only been looking at the brokenness. I've only been looking at the things that have been missed. I, I've only been looking at the parts that are not working. I want, my appeal is for you today. You only been looking at the job you didn't get and the degree that you didn't finish and the money that you don't have. But let me help you understand something today. God is trying to heal you God is trying to restore you. God is trying to replenish you. God is trying to mature you in this season. God is trying to bring you back. Amen. God is trying to bring you back for the, the greatest comeback one could ever know. But you got to change what you're looking at. So I appeal to you. And I ask that you would make the step, take the leap, have the courage to move out of your comfort zone so that you can experience peace. I speak peace even now, God. That I won't have any more sleepless nights. That I won't look at myself in the mirror and be disgusted with what I see. I declare even now, God, I won't look 
in the mirror and only see my imperfections. I declare even now, I won't look in the mirror and, and only see uh, everything that is that feels like it's being stripped away from me. And so the enemy is trying to make you think that you've lost. Amen. The enemy keeps trying to make you think that you've lost. And the Bible says, and I'll get out of the way, the Bible says, for to lose is to gain. And so everything that you think that you've lost or that's been stripped, those were nothing more than moments to get you to a place where you could see God. You saw all the stuff and you didn't see God. You, 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 you saw the imagery of what you thought it should have looked like and how you thought they should have shown up for you and what you thought they should have said to you. And you thought all those lost and missed moments uh, were trying to strip you of your joy. But those moments were to direct you back to God. And so if you if you would. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be redirected today. Amen. Be, be redirected today back to him. Change your lens and look for him. If that's you, amen, if that's you, uh, if you don't have a place that you're connected to, uh, you can write in the comment section, just put let's connect. And you can connect with us. We'll connect with you. But beyond, beyond, beyond connecting the true life, beyond being able to say, Pastor Tim's my pastor, beyond any of that stuff, I want you to be connected to God. It's not about me. It's about the relationship that you will maintain with him. So we offer Christ to you today. We want you to know God. Not Amen. Not the empty conversation of knowing him, but to truly know him. Amen. So if that's you, just put let's connect. Amen. You can uh, you can text let's connect uh, to the number that might be on your screen if you're looking on uh, Facebook or YouTube. I want to pray with you, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the type of peace that you bring. God, we thank you that you bring the peace that surpasses man's understanding. The type of peace you bring goes beyond all reason. The type of peace you bring goes beyond all intellect. The type of peace that you bring, God, goes beyond uh, our normal circumference of how we see you. Uh, but you bring the type of peace, God, that would uh, fully make us whole. And I've been on this kick, God, about being whole because of you. And I realize that uh, all of the fragmented parts of who I am uh, is nothing more than the opportunity for you to, to, for you to wrap your arms and start scooping up all of my heart hard places and all of my broken places and all of the all, all of my heaviness God you're you're scooping it all up God so that you can mend it and make me whole and I believe that you're making us whole today that we'll stop looking for you through the lens of our bro that we'll stop looking for you uh, through the lens of what hasn't happened but that we would take pleasure in uh, the things that are to come because of the relationship that has been restored, because of the relationship that has been built, uh, because of the salvation that you've extended by way of your son. God, we say thank you today, Jesus. That you're giving us the type of rest that settles our spirit and keeps us in search of you. Now we ask that you would come into our hearts and that you would transform it and that our declaration would be different as a result. That we would declare our faith, that we would declare our belief, and with that declaration, God, with that declaration of faith, amen, you regenerate us even now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, if you don't have a place, we want to be that place.